Well, hello, folks. Once again, it's good to be back with you and to be able to share a few little thoughts with you all from the Word of God. As well as that, it's been good to be back and be fit to meet with you at the drive-in, at the drive-in church every Sunday morning now. And it's just good to be back and to gather in some sort of form, isn't it? And unfortunately, the weather's let us down and we're not been fit to record outside tonight. But no matter wherever the Word of God goes forth, we know that it will not return unto him void. But I would believe the Lord is definitely going to do something in these days for, for such a time as this, that little verse tells us, and call unto me and I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. You know, God's going to use this old virus, I would think. God's going to use these times that we're in to in order to bring men and women unto himself. You know, if you wanted a little title tonight, my message is simply making much of Christ. Making much of Christ. You know, from reading in my own quiet times, it's something that has been on my own heart. And so I hope the Lord will, will bless and will speak to you, speak to you as well, the way he spoke to me through it. You know, look around us and the world makes makes much of many things, doesn't it? First it was COVID-19 that made so much about and now it's these riots all over in America. New channels will jump will, will jump on and tell you to make much of many things. And the world will make much of many things, won't they, except for Christ. But before I bring the word, we'll just we'll just bow in a wee moment's prayer and we'll ask the Lord to speak to us tonight. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come before you again, Lord, to share this little word that you've laid on my heart this Thursday night. Lord, I pray for each one listening tonight, Lord. I pray for each one, the lifeboat that may be listening. Father, we pray, Lord, that your their loving hand will be upon them, that you will care and undertake for each one. Lord, you know the needs far greater than I do, far greater than anyone knows for any hidden for any hidden woes or frets that men and women might have. We pray, Lord, that you will you will come very near to them, draw near to them in these days, Lord. And Lord, even for those who are perhaps not saved and have stumbled across this little word. I would pray, dear God, that you would speak to them. I would pray, dear God, that you would draw men and women to yourself in these days, Lord, as that little virgin Colossians says, that set your affections on things above. So help us in these days to set our affections on thee in these days, to put aside anything and lay aside every weight that would distract us. And just speak to us tonight, Lord, for we're asking it in Jesus' name. Amen. And if you're listening tonight, you just do that. You ask the Lord to speak to you and reveal his word to, to you and what he would want you to hear tonight. But anyway, making much of Christ. Are we making much of Christ in these days? Oh, before lockdown, we sat in our churches and maybe it was all about the hymns. And there's some good hymns, indeed there is. Much sung, but maybe we miss the words. Much preaching. But maybe we go, we, maybe we go out of a meeting and it's a, a, as, as little changed as we were before we went in. Good preaching, good prayers, but perhaps there's a, in the, in the whole heart of it, there's maybe very little in it. There's many daily devotionals and helps to help us limp our way to Christ in these days, but we can hear and hear and hear so much. Yet never see him, or so easy, isn't it, to lose focus on him? Have we lost the focus of what it, of what it means? That little verse in the New Testament says, "Christ in you, the hope of glory." He may be, he may be in us, but are we hearing him? God, you know, God has put us at put us in a stop, at a standstill in these days. I wonder why that could be. Maybe it's to refocus and to make refocus our minds, to refocus refocus us and to making much of Christ. There's just two little portions of scripture I want to turn you to tonight. Firstly to Psalm sixty nine and verse thirty. It simply says here I'll give you the time to find it, Psalm sixty nine and verse thirty. And here we find David writing this well known Psalm, and what does he tell us? He says, I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. 
I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. Magnify, to make much of, making much of Christ. And of course then in Mark chapter 5, Mark in chapter 5 and verse 24 we read of that little woman with the issue of blood. We read, and a certain woman which had an issue of blood both twelve years, had a certain had and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. And when she heard of Jesus, came and came in the press behind and touched his garment, for she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be made whole. And straight away the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging me, and sayest thou, Who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had touched done this thing. But the woman fearing, and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him, and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace, and be whole of thy plague. You'll remember the story of this little woman with the issue of blood, who knew that naught but Jesus Christ could make her, could make her whole. She had the heart that, that, made, that made much of Christ. Do we ma do we want to magnify Christ like this woman did? Do we want to magnify Christ in our day at the way David did here in Psalm 69? Or maybe we fall short of the mark. Have we left our first, first love? And you know, I pray that after lockdown, we won't be content to play church anymore. We won't we, we won't be content with the with the barren in and out Sunday morning, Sunday evenings, but that we might know him fully. You know, just a few points from both these chapters to consider to consider making much of Christ. First of all I would say if we jump to Psalm sixty nine, I will praise the name of God with a song, and will magnify him with thanksgiving. Firstly we could say we, know, we can know him personally, and that's seen through David's prayer. Accept that we can and must know him personally. We must accept that we can and can indeed know him personally, and therefore make much of him. Just that one little verse, I will magnify him. It's obvious that is what David here wanted to do. Believer, and this is this really what we want to do? To make our life, our home, our job, our relationships, our friendships, absolutely everything. Focused and glorifying and magnifying the name of Christ. It's not impossible, you know. David is only one example of so many in the world that wanted to glorify him. Think of Paul then. Enoch did. And scripture tells us that Enoch walked with God. It's the, is that not personal? May all who seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee, the scriptures tell us. May those who love thy salvation say continually, Great is the Lord, in Psalm 40 and verse 16. Or what about Psalm 34? Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Or what about Psalm 48 and 1? Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. Greatly to be praised, not half-heartedly, not to not... Not just keep, not um, quietly or coldly, but greatly praising the name of the Lord. Just a few little verses that go along with verse 30 here in verse in Psalm 69. They make much of him. This was the heart cry of every Old Testament saint. And now it is the longing and it ought to be the longing of every true Christian. So whether you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, be it all to the glory of God, First Corinthians 10 and verse 31 would tell us. That is, do everything so that God may be magnified. If you have met the loving Son of God, Jesus Christ, and have joined ourselves to him in faith and has come to the knowledge of Jesus as our Saviour's believer, should we not be magnifying his name? Should we not be praising him and giving him all the honour and thanks and glory? 
Then does not your heart say with Paul, it is my expectation and hope that I shall not be as she, but that with full courage now, as always, Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. Therefore I say it's the mark of all God's true children that walk after him, that they long to magnify the God of their salvation. And his son, Jesus Christ. Look at how personal David's prayer is to a great and almighty God. It shows a man who wanted to know him. It shows a man who wanted to get to know God, to glorify him personally. We can make much of him when we when we are in trouble as well. We see that here in Psalm 69. In the first number of verses it says... Save me, O God, for the waters are come in, to, come in unto my soul. I sink in deep myrrh, where there is no standing. I am come into deep waters where the floods overflow me. I am weary of my crying, my throat is dry. Mine eyes fail while I wait for my God. And so on, David writes about the distress that he's in. David knew none other than to go to. During his time of suffering unto the Lord, his complaints to all are so sad, and he pours them out before the Lord, as one that hoped thus to ease himself of a burden that was laid so so heavily upon him. We can glorify him and know him also personally when we are in distress. David complains of this deep, pressing trouble that is made upon him from these first number of verses, and his affliction, those bitter waters that David's writing about. That for they've come unto my soul, not only threaten my life, but disquiet my mind. They fill my head with perplexing cares and my heart with aggressive with, with grief, so that I can't that I cannot enjoy God and myself as I used to do. We shall bear up under our troubles if we can if we can keep them from our hearts. But when they but when they put us out of the possession of our own souls, our cause our cause is dire. You know, the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but what shall we do when the spirit is wounded? And you know, that's exactly here how David was feeling. He was feeling as a wounded man. He was feeling as a man with many distresses. That was David's case. His thoughts sought for nothing to confide in. <clears throat> and that was to support his hope. But he found nothing. He sunk in, in deep mirror, tells us, where there was no standing, no firm footing. The consideration that used to support and encourage him, now had failed him. And they were out of the way. And he was ready to give himself up for God. He feels the enemy are all around him. And he seeks for deliverance. What does that tell me? It tells us that we can make much of him when we are in distress. He is there for us when we feel that all hope is gone. When all hope is gone, don't give up. Christ is on the way. He's only ever a prayer away. It tells me that we can make much of him in our distress. The intimacy of David's prayer here in Psalm 69 when I was reading it, it's striking. Verse 13, but as for me, my prayers unto thee, O Lord, and an acceptable time, O God, in the multitude of thy mercy, hear me in the truth of thy salvation. Oh, what an honesty. Oh, what an intimacy. Oh, what praise David had for his for the Lord. Do we even echo this praiseful pleading plea of David's? Well, we be honest with ourselves. Do we ever truly echo what David, the, the, our, in our prayers? How David was when he came before God. Though he could not keep his head above water, yet he cried to his God. And the more death was in his view, the more life was in his prayers. I'll say that again when I was reading it. I just scribbled that down. The more death seemed to surround him, the more life was in his prayers. Is there life in our prayers? Do we pray believing? We often sing it. Come believing, come believing. You know, do we believe in this man, Christ Jesus? Do we believe and make much of his dear name? <clears throat> ah, friend, he gives a peace that he gave David. Comfort and praying which God's people used to have, so that he was almost weary of praying. He grew hoarse in his throat. I read this down, so dry that he could cry no more. Nor had he his, had his satisfaction and believing, hoping and expecting relief. What about that? Expectancy. 
you know, it's a word that we often forget about or is not talked about very much now in Christian circles either. Expectancy. Looking for that blessed hope the scriptures tells us. An expectancy. When we come before God, do we expect him to move? I'm not saying coming to him of some sort of genie as I've talked about before, what making all our wants and wishes known. I'm not saying that. I'm saying coming with an expectancy, knowing that God and his sovereignty, God and his perfect will, will work everything out. Do we come to him that way? David said, my eyes fail me while I wait for my God. He had almost looked his eyes out. An expectation of deliverance. That's the word, expectation. Are we expecting from what God can do? Do we know that when we come to that great I am of Moses that he wrote about in Exodus, this is the one we praise, the one who can do the exceedingly abundant thing whatsoever we ask or think. There's nothing and nobody superior to God. And so the calling of those who love God is to make his greatness begin to look as great as he really is, to magnify his name. You know, the whole duty of the Christian can be summed up in this. Feel, think and act in a way that will make God look as great as he really is. Be a telescope for the world of the infinite glory of God. You know, if a friend who's unsaved doesn't see much of you magnifying Christ, he's not going to think much of God. If he sees you not living the testimony that you, that you ought to have, making much of Christ, it's not going to do very much. It's going to... It's going to make God look very small in that person's eyes. But you should, but this God is infinite, omnif om omnificent, omnipotent and great. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. We ought to be making much of him. Note the end of that little verse. It says, with thanksgiving. No, ought not our praises and honour go up to him in thanksgiving? Another reason it ought to be obvious, but isn't it? Due to the sinful insensitivity and forgetfulness of our hearts, many of our God's greatest attributes and most awesome and loving deeds pass, pass in one ear and go out the other. You know, the hymn writer penned it well when he said, Count your blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Oh, count your blessings, friends. Young man, young woman, count your blessings and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. There's greatly much to praise him for. You know, they go in one ear and out the other. They, cause the, they only cause the slightest ripple of emotion within our hearts. Seeing we do not see and hearing we do not hear. When our hearts are in such a condition, we need to beg God, like Paul did, to open the eyes of our hearts that we might know, that is, really know, and feel the hope to which he has called us. And what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power in us who believe? But even when God graciously removed the scales from our eyes, so we can be moved by his greatness, we are still prone to straight away forget what we have seen. You know, when you think about it, haven't you all had experiences like I have? And what you feel the goodness and faithfulness of God so in, so intensely that you keep that you leap in the air and shout and hug you and you just want to tell someone about what the Lord has done for you. You say, Oh God, how could I ever doubt you after this? How could I ever again despair of your help? How could I ever not make much of your great name? And then some short time later you find yourself doing just that. Discouraged and feeling no confidence in the goodness or the greatness of God. Why? Because we are so prone to forget the evidences of God's goodness. And we ourselves have experience. So do not forget what God has done for you. And say, instead, we ought to do what the what what the soul did, what Asaph did in Psalm 77. He says, I will call to mind the deeds of the Lord. Yea, I will remember thy wonders of old. Ah, oh, friend, don't we often, we're so prone to forget. Just look back, look back and we'll soon see what the Lord has done. You know, we ought to meditate on it. You know, meditate upon it day and night what the Lord has done. Thy way, O God, is holy. What God, what God is great like our God. That where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. I love that wee verse. Is he your treasure? Not in any purpose or thought or deed or motive. 
not to climb the ranks of the church, not to get noticed or have your name known or put on the books, no, simply and wholly to honour his name. We can know him in our sufferings, we can magnify him in them. Don't, for, don't focus on the circumstances, focus on, the, on Christ, and in our prayers we know that we can come to great Almighty when we make much of him. Don't come to him with a shopping list. How about just praising him for the fact that we can know him? You know that reverse I've quoted an awful lot of the open airs over this last couple of weeks. It's in finding John. Whom to know is life eternal. Whom to know is life eternal. Is it not great to think that it is, it is life eternal? It's an everlasting thing to know God. So should it not be an everlasting thing in our life to praise him? We're going to praise him in the glory land someday. Indeed we are. We long to see our Saviour's face. So should we not get used to singing and praising and magnifying his dear name down here? Whom to know is life eternal. Lovely reverse in John it is. Life down here abundant and life everlasting up there to know him. To have his presence down here and his person up there. To have his voice down here and his visage up there. To have the word down here and a hope of wonders everlasting up there. Oh yes, let me tell you that we can know him. We can magnify him and to do so is life eternal. Oh yes, we can know him personally in our sufferings, in our prayers and in our daily lives. So we can make much of him personally because the fact that we know him in our sufferings and in our day-to-day -day lives. <laughs> Secondly, you know, we ought to magnify him not only in our sufferings, but what about in the fact of our salvation? <laughs> you know, the picture of the cross in this little psalm can be seen all the way through. <laughs> we can know him in his sufferings. We can know him in our sufferings. But you know what? We can know and make much and praise his name because of all he has suffered bore and went through for us and all he has accomplished on that cross we like to magnify many things a church a preacher maybe even ourselves as it ever honestly and fully and only for christ i go to mention the cross as surely this is where we magnify him the most and as it's seen in this lovely psalm but wait stop preachers will tell you to look to the cross yes to look to Calvary's cross, yes. To make much of Golgotha, yes. I know I hope I bring this across right, otherwise I'm in baller. But we know what, oh, we must magnify the man on the cross. We're getting so caught up with the cross instead of the, instead of the Christ. The message so much over the man. Let us not ever forget the wonder of it all. Let us not ever forget that place. Let's, however, never forget where he is now. He's up there, seated on the right hand of God, making intercession for us. Magnify him because of his life, death, and resurrection at seen and spoke about in this little psalm. We can praise him and sing our hymns without ever getting to know him, truly. Without ever magnifying him, truly. Do we do it in love? Do we do it in adoration and honour? For his dear name, can we say wholeheartedly and honestly along with the verse of the Songs of Solomon, and has been quoted much lately as well by a brother of mine, he is altogether lovely. He is the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. Oh, what does that tell us of? How that little verse speaks to us of sweet communion together, of closeness beyond this scene of time, of a love more than anything this earth, of our minds can comprehend down here. Truly it is a joy unspeakable and full of glory. Or is it a bore? Or is it a bore? Have, you, have you not quite got there yet? Move on from the cross. <clears throat> move on from the cross, friend. And get your, your eyes refocused, not only on the cross, but on the man on the cross. You know, we see ch crosses on some church windows. We see churches on chap or crosses on chapels and we see people running around town with a wee cross round their neck <sighs> make much of the cross oh i indeed do or if it weren't for that old rugged cross you would never have been seen but let's not forget the man on the cross god's only begotten son 
how that little verse speaks to me of sweet communion. Oh yes, when our faith is shaken, we can what we can you know, sometimes we wonder if everything we read in the scriptures is true and sure. Seeing Jesus in the Psalms reminds me of how faithful God is to not only fulfill prophecy from hundreds of thousands of years ago, but also that the future prophetic words that we read in Scripture of what's yet to come are sure as well. They that hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of mine head. Jesus talk it talks about here in Psalm sixty nine. Oh, so many despised him. Oh, so many rejected and rebelled and crucified him. And to think that he would do that for me. To think, friends, that he would do that for for ones who are our sins are as filthy rags. The chief among sinners, as Paul could talk about. Was it for me? For me alone the Saviour left his glorious throne. It was for me. Yes, all for me. He, he died for me, my Lord and King. Does it not thrill your heart? Does it not make you think of the miracles, to think of the greatness of God became flesh, the perfect plan of redemption? Oh, it's not in a feeling. No, it's not in an experience. It's in magnifying Christ himself. It seems in this, you know, in this lovely prophesy, prophesying psalm, Oh, you know, we see it. We see the picture of it all. We see David being so cast down. We see David be so discouraged and on the, on the verge of giving up. I thank the Lord Jesus never gave up. When he went to that old cross, he said, Father, if this cup may be passed from me, nevertheless, thy will be done. And that bitter cup, love drank it up. He went there for us. You know, all, when you're reading the Psalms, always look for Jesus in them. There's some lovely wee Mas Masonic, um, if I could say that word right, Psalms that, that speak to us of what Jesus did. The wonder, awful wonders, the hymn writer penned them. You know, he knows you, he sees you, he cares for you. So I wonder, do we care so little of all that he did? You want to go on with God, brilliant. Many preacher will tell you to gain something. Maybe that's prayer. Maybe that's time in the Word. Maybe that is more time in church and that's great. And if the Lord is dealing with you and telling you that that's what's needed, by all means do it. You know, maybe that's prayer. Maybe it's a time in the Word. The Lord is telling you to start that and you know it, then do it. You know, other preachers will tell you you need to lose something. Your attitude, your attachment to the world, your old desires and yes, yes. Let me tell you to the, the, they need to go. Crucify those affections that, that stop you getting closer to magnifying Christ's name. Between all this gaining and losing. But you know the rest will fall into You know how I would tell you if you want to simply. If you want to go through with God and launch out into the deep. Found in one little word. And this, if, if I could focus this. And this would be the focus of my message. Himself. Himself. Magnify his dear name, making much of Christ himself. Yes, we need, if your life is lacking spiritually, we need to gain something. Yes, if there's too much of the world in it, we ought to lose something by all means. And that's scriptural, and I'm not disputing that. But if you want the foot to go to know Jesus Christ, who is life eternal, whom to know is life eternal, then we simply look to him himself. That is the key, friend. Seek him in his face himself, and you will have much to praise him for. You will have much to lift up your voice in honour and praise and thanksgiving for. We often quote it to the unsaved to consider Christ. But many believers, that is exactly what we need to do around this time of lockdown, to consider Christ. Tozer mentioned this in a book I'm reading at the minute, and he quoted, quoted this hymn, and it sums up the point of making Great the name of the one who is altogether lovely. And I quoted it not long on Facebook there, but once it was the blessing, now it is the Lord. Once it was a feeling, now it is his word. Once his gift I wanted, now the giver own. Once I sought for healing, now himself alone. All in all forever, only Christ I'll sing. Everything is in Christ. And Christ is everything. You know, that's it. That's my message in a nutshell tonight.
that Christ is everything. He's all in all. Excuse me. And that, that says why we ought to magnify his great name. I will praise the name of God with a song. I will magnify him with thanksgiving. David did it in his sufferings. And in the day to day of his life. We see that in this little psalm. As also a picture of the cross. We can magnify him because of the cross. And all he's done for us. You know finally then. We'll jump to Mark 5. The woman with the, with the issue of blood. I would write over this. Doing anything to get to know him. And praise him. First point was we can know him, know him personally. And we ought to accept that we can. Second point was. We ought to make much of Christ. And what he's done and accomplished for us. Third point, the woman at the issue of blood, doing anything to get to know him and to praise him. Finally, let us look at this little woman in the New Testament for a little lesson we can learn from her on getting closer to Jesus. I'm sure that every believer wants to make much of Christ. You know, I'd question your salvation, friend, if you don't. As John could say that he must, he must end, as John the Baptist could say, that he must, Christ must increase and he must decrease. Is that, is that, if that is what we want to do, to see Christ properly and be able to glorify him in such a way that we ought to, we can see something from the woman with the issue of blood on how to go about it. That's the little woman had her distress. And there's many believers with distress today. You know, that God knows the need, he knows the burden and cares and woes and frets on men, women and young people's hearts, and there he does. But this little woman had her distress, her issue with blood. The commentator will tell us that she tried many a physician, that she tried many a remedy, that she tried many a thing to try and get this issue resolved. You know, have we, well, maybe to apply this to the believer, we've tried so much to get closer to him. And to make much of his name. But it all seems manufactured. It all seems fake to us. We have tried singing the hymns. We have tried going to every prayer meeting. Every convention and mission. Or, or today maybe how we have listened to every preacher on the internet. And yet we still feel like we, like he, we haven't found him properly. You know this little woman what did she do? She pushed her way toward Jesus amidst a thronging crowd. What does that tell me? A go, it means go through with God even if the crowd are going in the opposite direction. Seek after him for him alone. Don't let the crowd stop you. Fight for it. Fight the good fight. If you have the Lord and the Lord knows the heart, he knows if you really want to get there. The crowd may push against you. The crowd may come against you. You will. You may and you will. Face opposition for wanting to know Jesus Christ more. You will. Indeed you will. But Jesus knew, he, I'm pretty sure he knew that this little woman was going to be coming to him. As they were pre she was pressing her way through the crowd. She ignored the pushing and shoving as if it were just her and Jesus. There's the key. She ignored the crowd as if it was just her and Jesus. And she pushed through. She knew that touching the hem of his garment would heal her and make her whole. Jesus said, he touched me. Oh, not who pushed or shoved and rubbed against me, but the one who had touched him. So many push and shove to get near Christ. They will try it all. They will throw a brother or sister under the bus simply to get closer to Jesus, or rather, simply to get that position in the church. They'll throw a belief, they'll, they'll, put a, they'll say a sharp, cutting word to a believer, to, or to a fellow saint, just to get up the pedestal. They'll say a cutting blow just to be recognised. There'll be many a jolt, there'll be many a push, there'll be many a shove. Just like the crowd were here around Jesus. By hook or by crook, by pushing or shoving, they will doze everyone out of the road until they get where they want to be for selfish reasons, perhaps. But she touched him. She ignored the strife and the debate and the argument and just came and touched him in love and faith and in believing power. Many jolted him, but she touched him. So many are still in the crowd and revel in the crowd. Maybe you're content in the crowd. Content in the crowd and you don't want to move out of place for fear that you'll be that people will look at you funny. 
You know, I've been reading that book about A.W. Tozer, I Talk Back to the Devil. Tozer was never afraid to use words like fantasism or mystical or words like that to describe what it means to get to know God. To the, to the modern day church, it seems that getting to know Jesus and making much of Jesus is something of fantasism. Oh, I'll lose my reputation for doing it. All my friends will I'll, 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 I'll make fun of me for doing that. Oh, that's for the spiritual elite. Friends, this, this precious book knows nothing about that. It doesn't. It ought to be the joy and desire of every believer to magnify him and to do as this little woman here did and to push past the crowd, to push past the contentment of the crowd, those who simply want to argue, to bait, to jolt, to push and to shove and to come and simply get near to Jesus. Many are still in the cry. Jesus maybe is telling us in this lockdown. He is waiting for someone to, pa to, to push past the cry, to disregard it and to push through in love and in faith and to touch him, to seek him, to magnify him. And then don't just stop there. Keep going. Keep going for he is altogether lovely. Back in the Songs of Solomon it says, I have found the one whom my soul loveth. And that's the little verse I'll finish with. I have found the one whom my soul loveth. I wonder have, have we sought to magnify him? If not, then do like this little woman in Mark 5. She indeed found the one whom her soul loveth. So did the woman at the well. What did she do? She ran away and said, Come see a man that told me all things that ever I did. And friends, believer, if that's you, I'd encourage you. Over this lockdown, and this restrictions are lifted and we can go back to church and we can go back into church. Don't settle for a morbid faith. Don't settle for the, the mediocre when you could have the mountain top. Excuse me, I think I might be coming down with a cold. But magnify his name. Believe in his dear name. And make much of Christ. That was my title. Making much of Christ. Don't make much of a meeting. Don't make much of a hymn. But make much of the man and of the, the meeting ought to be about. Make much of the prayer that whom you're, whom you're praying to. And just like this little woman, well, when the, at the, with the issue of blood. Well, you'll, f you'll be as her. You'll find yourself made whole. You'll find that emptiness, that longing, that desire, believer that you might have wanted, it'll soon be made whole. So I trust you, the Lord has blessed and he's spoken to you in the way that he wants to speak to you. And God, God bless and take care and continue to stay safe in these days, folks. And we all been well. We'll see you on Sunday morning at the drive-in. God bless.